the road and then there's trying to be a sprint through it. So look on the left, this guy is not competing in the sprint. So Sam Watson then chops um, Matt Bostock and then Jim Brown ends up crashing. We're gonna All right, so here we have Oakley Grand Prix. It's a pretty technical circuit. It's part of the National Crit, Champs, uh, Crit Circuit Championships in the UK. Uh, it's like a national series um, event. Out front, we've got some pretty big hitters. We've got Samuel Watson, who came second in the National Champs. Ollie Reese, who raced for the Trinity. And Rob Scott as well, who's uh, got some good results on the continent this year. So the reason I want to go through this race is because the finish is an absolute fast. But before we get through that, we're just going to go through some of the final laps. So these guys were off the front. They had a pretty big gap. They managed to lap the field, I'm pretty sure. And they got a motorbike out front. Now, this is going to be very important watching the motorbike out front. Now, this race, basically, with three laps to go, most people would sprint for their finishing positions because they're lapped riders. So obviously, that makes sense. You wouldn't want them contesting the finish. Now, that is exactly what is supposed to happen under most sort of general crit rules across the world really, not just a UK issue. You can see behind, um, there's some other people who are chasing as well, um, which is actually three Canyon, uh, well, they're called, now called with Sun God Riders, and they had three of them, which is the national champ himself, Matt Bostock, um, along with Jim Brown, and I'm pretty sure um, it was Rob Scott as well. So the, here you can see them coming up just behind them. So it's a pretty interesting course because it's very basically uphill one side, downhill the other. It's a pretty grippy circuit all around. Like you can see it gets up to sort of 10% or so. So it definitely suits more of a punchy, climby boy than necessarily just a pure sprinter. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Sam Watson, who's also finished second in the National Crit Champs as well, is looking really strong. And to be honest, like, he'd be one of your favorites for this. Obviously, Rob Scott is waiting for his teammates. Then he'll have a out of six, he'll have four of the, the riders, which obviously gives him a massive numerical advantage. How much you can play a numerical advantage on this course, I'm not 100% sure, because at the end of the day, you just have to be the strongest on the climb. So I'm not really sure how much you can really sit on that much. Like, you know, if someone's attacked on the climb, uh, on the descent, well, the guy's going to wait to the climb and launch it there and see if he can get across. And obviously, if you just don't have the watts, you're just not going to um, be able to follow them across. So I think the numbers game may be not as important as it is in other circuits. You can see just by the speed here, it's not absolutely, um, it's not huge, which again illustrates that the drafting effect is not going to be massive. Uh, Rob Scott was just like, saying to like Sam Watson, like, I'm not doing any work. I've got three guys behind, which is fair enough. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you work? Um, and this part of the circuit is now basically all downhill. Um, there's a technical right-hand corner, but that, apart from that, it, that's basically the only real technical feature of the whole course, um, which then brings you into the start-finish line. So these guys here had a pretty big advantage. They were working relatively well together um, before Rob Scott decided to not work. You can see they're catching a lot of lap riders, which on the circuit this short is not really too surprising uh, just because, you know, as soon as you're off the bat, you know, you've got lesser draft, all the rest of it, and also you're just less motivated. And these guys are definitely the strongest in the race. Um, and so, you know, it's not surprising that you're going to see some lap riders. Again, this is... Um, well, I guess this is the final right-hand corner, which isn't really too technical. It's quite um, a gentle right-hand corner into the finishing straight. Generally, people will say you've got to be first wheel into the finishing straight, which makes sense. There's some dodgy barriers on the right-hand side already. Number one thing that's not looking great for the finish, like why the feet coming out, no one knows, but it's British cycling, so anything can happen. Um, so here's Matt Bostock, who's leading the chase behind. Uh, Rob Scott actually doesn't mind. Oh, sorry, not Rob Scott. Um, <laughs> Jacob Scott doesn't actually, who I believe is number seven, he doesn't actually manage to get on because um, Matt Bostock absolutely hammers it. And you can see it, Ollie Reese is doing exactly the same thing, which makes sense. Um, you, They don't want them to come back because if they come back, they're all in big trouble. And Matt Bostock is definitely the fastest finisher there. Uh, and you can see he's done an absolute max effort here to try and get across because he knows if he gets across now um, with basically like half a lap to go, then you know he's gonna be able to complete the finish so it's absolute chaos up front as well ollie reese puts in a massive dig sam watson only just about closing it but you're gonna pan across now to see Bat bostock flying across the gap and he's been looking really really strong he was you know in the lead group in the national champs like the road race he was there with cav and everyone else unfortunately he clipped a wheel crashed out well didn't crash out but then finished i think top 10 in the end but he definitely could have got a better result having not had that you can see Jim Brown is number four. He's trying to come across, uh, get um, ahead of Jacob Scott. But I think that on the downhill, there was a bit of playing around in the head, so it was possible to get back on, uh, which helped uh, with Sungo quite a lot. But again, in the finish, there's not too much team tactics. It's just who's got the best sprint, who's got the best positioning. Um, so the, again, they have the right-hander onto the downhill. It's like a decently wet, it's looking wet dry at the moment, not great for the, the cornering grip. Um, sorry, it gets a little bit laggy, some of the feed here. It's film 5 4G. It's um, it's big that these races are actually filmed because they are super interesting to watch and a lot better 
um, than a lot of the other things that are filmed, like boring road races, for example. This is actually an hour of pretty exciting races. Um, so you can see here, guy with Sun God trying to get guys to the front straight away because they know you've got to be first into the right corner. But look what you can see up ahead, some lap riders. Somehow they haven't taken lap riders out. The motorbike in front of them doesn't say them to um, to keep left or either side. So they're basically all across to be a sprint through it. So look on the left. This guy is not competing in the sprint. So Sam Watson then chops um, Matt Bostock and then Jim Brown ends up crashing. We're going to watch this again in slow-mo because it's pretty hard to see exactly what happens. Um, but yeah, everyone is very unhappy, obviously. Why there were lap riders literally competing in the finish is a joke. Um, but... It just seems like I don't really know what was going on, who was in charge of telling the lap riders out. But surely it's better just to get the lap riders out if there's a small chance they might like uh, damage the finish. So I'll watch this again so you can see, I believe this is um, Jim Brown coming up on the right-hand side of the road, Matt Bostock on the left-hand side of the road going for the sprint. Uh, Sam Watson actually wins it. Is not in the best position now. He's like third wheel going into the final corner, which I think normally would be too slow. But then they slow up. Then they weave to the right. Then there's this other Trinity rider, I think he is, who's in the front. So we're going to see head on. This guy on the left-hand side of the road, this Trinity rider, he's not part of the sprint. So watch Sam Watson. He comes across to chop Matt Bostock because he can see the thing. Matt Bostock then goes even further, and then the barriers slightly come out, and Jim Brown crashes into them. But it's a joke that there's so many people. like That looked like absolute carnage, um, and I don't really get why they left them in. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one.